Uh, it's my pleasure to be here again this afternoon. This is my third uh, AGM as Managing Director of MLA. Uh, I am the last speaker of the day and, and uh, I will not take too much of your time and I will be trying to be uh, as forthright as I can about creating a vision for where we would like to take MLA. And talking of visions, this industry has had a great history of people in it that have led the industry and created great visions. Visions that still deliver today. And I want to touch on that today as well. And I also want to tell you about how MLA is meeting the industry needs today, tomorrow and beyond 2020. So three, three things I want to cover. And, and as I said, the first one of those is, is around commercial outcomes that visionaries in our industry have created, have created and are still delivering enormous value to industry today. Uh, then I'll canvas and touch on a lot of what uh, uh, the general managers presented today and, and try and enhance some of those great presentations we saw from, from the MLA team. Uh, and then I'll talk about a vision that I'd like to see industry endorse and take up that will, that will lead our industry beyond 2020. So today, if I talk about MLA having a history uh, and the red meat industry having uh, a planning and, and investment models beyond a five-year period that we traditionally have. Uh, and, and again, this is a little, little untraditional for the MLA and our marketing and research company and breaks the mould a little. So I want to give you three examples of things that have created long-term vision, a long-term value for our industry. The first of those is obviously MSA or Meat Standards Australia. And I say this a lot to anyone that's uh, had to endure me over the last three years around, I congratulate the red meat industry for endorsing that the most important person in the value chain is the consumer. MSA today, in the last financial years, delivered premiums of $88 a head between carcasses, beef carcasses that were graded MSA and not graded MSA. Over 3.2 million head of cattle, or 36% of the industry uh, of, of beef slaughtered in the cattle, or beef slaughtered in this country on an annual basis now are MSA graded. So 3.2 million cattle, over the eight, $88 a head is just under $200 million back to industry. And in previous years, it's been well over $200 million. And put it that in context that the rolling five-year budget of MLA, including government matching funds, is $180 million. So there's one program that previous leaders in our industry have delivered to our industry uh, that is still delivering today. And we have 43,000 voluntary members in the MSA program. And the great thing I think about MSA is that independent data for Millard and Brown which is around how consumers, consumers rank beef, rate beef for consistency above all other proteins, above chicken and pork and lamb. Uh, so that, to me, is, is a clear example. Another example is Auctions Plus. Now, I know MLA doesn't own Auctions Plus, but, but forefathers of our industry and people in our industry back in the late 1980s developed Auctions Plus. Uh, sitting around with green screens and the idea that one day we'll trade livestock on farm on a live weight basis and sell them to processors and restockers. Today, nearly 25, I think we had 30 year celebration this year, did we not, of Auctions Plus, where today Auctions Plus transacts about 10% of, of trades uh, in the livestock industry of just under $500 million in value. And, and Auctions Plus, uh, again, too, is is addressing some of the issues around animal welfare. The animals are on farm, allowing sellers to, to uh, command a price, then perhaps take a price. And the last one of, of foresight in our industry that, that has and continues to live a value today, and you've heard a lot about today from Jane Weatherly, Dr Jane Weatherly, is around our food integrity and traceability systems. You saw today that, that we have just done the 60% market share in the high value markets of Japan and South Korea. Uh, and we have those market shares because of our traceability systems. Uh, Dr Weatherly clearly indicated that today. We do have chilled access into China because of our traceability systems. And as Dr Jane Weatherly demonstrated, we're now in a position to move to uh, addressing consumers' concerns around where their food comes from, and we can do it on an individual basis because of our industry integrity systems. So that's where we are as an industry. 
those three examples continue to create enormous value to our industry. So what about what are we doing tomorrow as MLA to generate value for our industry and stakeholders? So firstly, we're ensuring your MLA is com as commercially focused as you are in your businesses. Uh, last year, we delivered corporate cost savings. Uh, and this year, we realigned research projects to be in line with the MIST 2020. And we did so, and in doing so, we created $8 million in value uh, to ensure that as income streams decline, as our herd has and, and goes back through a rebuilding stage over the next few years, that there's up to $14 million to be spent on marketing and research over the next four years. We have developed new consultation models through our uh, SAMRAC, WALRAC and NABRAC models. Levy payers have the ability to really consult MLA on where the R&D is spent. And we have new models for, for development and, and adoption and also marketing, which I'll run through. But one of the models that is apparent to me that is a real opportunity for our industry and, and it was evolved through the development of the National Livestock Genetics Consortia. So through that development, I found that there's universities out there believing they're doing research as creating value, and, and the other researchers that believe they're doing things, perhaps in the genetic space, that's creating value. By MLA funneling all that research through one table that is dominated by early adopters in the genetics field, we are eliminating duplication, but the other great thing is we are ensuring that all R&D around genetics uh, in this country, in the livestock industry, is being brought through one place to maximise the research dollars available. We're also enhancing MLA's marketing information service, which is ISO 9001 accredited. We're working with Cattle Council on developing a wholesale pricing model and a cutout model at their request. Uh, we're covering more sale yards in northern Queensland, and we've also developed a market indicator for Western Australia. You saw today that we're developing My MLA, a personalised, intuitive-based software system where you can design your own, own feedback system for how you want to see information about what MLA does and the markets, whether it be over the hook or live markets that you want to look up and address that is helping you as levy payers make better decisions and make decisions just in time. And thirdly, about what we're doing tomorrow, we're building on our strengths and heading off our threats. So by sh streamlining and strengthening the industry integrity systems as you've gone through today and seen, and moving to more user-friendly interface so producers have that feedback, uh, and compliance through a single sign-on is about making your lives easier as producers. Uh, we want to absolutely put on one platform your compliance needs uh, and all the information that you require from MSA in an easy to use format. You've seen today that we're accelerating innovation. I thought uh, uh, it was very hard not to be proud of the MLA team that presented today. You saw that the donor company uh, today in a financial year is managing up to uh, $60 million of investment. But actually through the whole pipeline, there's $130 million under management. So that's $65 million worth of private investment that's going through MLA. And I think that's something that industry hasn't understood in the past. And in my time at being an MLA, something that you as a red meat industry should be very, very proud of, the fact that you have people willing to put their private funds into a company like MDC to, for innovation in our industry. But unfortunately, we also have a few threats and we're fighting two applications at the moment around genetic, um, that threaten the genetic advancement of our industry uh, in the international competitiveness of our industry. One is by a North American company that's taken a patent out on the uh, bovine genome, uh, which potentially means if we lose uh, our High Court challenge now around this patent, that all genomic work done uh, in the beef industry will incur a licence fee. And there's a similar patent application made by AVS, 
which is a subsidiary of the former uh, Victorian Department of Agriculture. Uh, we are fighting these patents on behalf of industry. Uh, and, might I say, we have had support from government on ways to address these patents uh, moving forward in the, in, in the future. And finally, I'll touch on um, what we're doing to ensure uh, that red meat, and Australian red meat, remains on our domestic and international dinner plates. We're spending more money by understanding each market. You saw that clearly today from Michael Finucane. We now spend over $2 million annually on consumer insights, giving you the data that, that Michael presented. And a million dollars of that is through the R&D for profit uh, in a project called Insights to, uh, to Innovation, which is addressing the huge consumer market of China and how best as a red meat industry we can obtain the most value out of um, supply chain and marketing within that market. Our domestic market strategy. For beef, we promote the attributes that matter to consumers, specifically nutrition and versatility. We are also looking at nutrition in different ways, not just iron, protein and zinc, but promoting beef as a fresh and natural, uh, via, as, as fresh and natural, via new programs that focus on providence with stories that celebrate beef's goodness and delicious taste and texture. So you will see, and, and I've, I, uh, I've never had an original idea, so I always quote who I've pinched it from. Um, and to quote Blair Angus, you know, the red meat industry does and can move to promoting red meat like red wine. Um, if you don't like that quote, then take it up with Blair. <laughs> <coughs> For lamb, we continue to promote its versatility, be that through cuts, cuisine type and, and occasions, ensuring lamb remains relevant to a modern and diverse Australia. Our tailored joint business plans with large retail stores are designed to ensure red meat maintains its rightful place in cabinets with merchandising, uh, with merchandising and new products developed by key, uh, which are key to ensuring our products remain relevant to the retailer. But importantly, we must meet the needs of often busy and time poor shoppers. The Australian Butchers Guild program is designed and delivered in conjunction with the Australian Meat Industry Corporation, and you heard today from, from Lockie. It's designed to deliver education and merchandise to support butchers, ensuring we sustain a vibrant, independent retail channel. We continue to engage with all sectors of the food service industry to ensure business owners are aware of and utilising all available beef and lamb cuts. And that's Sam Burke's role. And, and if you've, what you've seen from fam, Sam Burke today, I think it's in pretty safe hands. This is to ensure that our product meets, meets their goals of the food service industry and, and the pressures of being in that industry, which is an extremely, uh, extremely competitive environment. So industry also has opportunities, as, as Michael pointed out. You've seen the growth and the, and the numbers that are uh, coming our way through Southeast Asia. Uh, we will also work with the industry to seek the opportunities from, Bex, Bex, from, from the UK's exit from the EU. And we'll see... <laughs> I thought you'd help me out. Brexit. <laughs> I'm not going to do it again. Brexit, thank you. The opportunities for Brexit to, uh, to understand what our opportunities are with free trade agreements direct with the United Kingdom and direct with the European Union. Uh, but as an industry, we need to perhaps consider uh, how we could better coordinate our efforts around the many technical trade barriers that Michael uh, did uh, demonstrate today in his presentation. And MLA is here to assist industry to address these technical trade barriers with our extensive global network. So that's the last on, on what we are doing as an industry now. And I now want to talk about beyond 2020. Um, and it's, to me, it's about developing the new technology to generate, generate more value right across the value chain. You saw the recent ACCC uh, release, its interim report on the cattle and beef market study and, and its attention on the competitiveness of the Australian uh, beef and cattle markets. And it said it could be improved through objective carcass measurements. 
Uh, I took a real slap in the face and was quite hurt that uh, the ACCC decided to compare the red meat industry to the wool industry and say that they do it better. They objectively measure wool. I know it's a fibre, but the comparison was made that they objectively measure wool and have done for two decades. So MLA has been working on many fronts around objective measurement programs under the direction and support of the Peak Industry Councils in Cattle Council Australia and the Sheep Meats Council. The benefits of objective carcass measurement to producers include the transparency of the product, objective measures, not subjective measures, a pathway to value-based marketing if desired by industry, accurate production data, and perhaps that accurate, accurate production data will be by cut in the future. It will also assist us in genetic improvement in this country. But the benefits to the whole value chain uh, include, as you've seen from Sean Starling's presentation, a more efficient processing industry. It would reduce wastage and workforce industry. And it will provide uh, the provision for accurate and objective data uh, to boost productivity through our processing sector. But the first stage of objective carcass measurement that I'm going to talk about in a minute would be the first stage that would allow a processing facility to move to automated boning rooms. So I'd ask you to consider that uh, when I rang Ox, uh, Osmeat the other day, I found out that just in Osmeat accredited plants, there's 845 graders. So take that as an annual cost that they cost somewhere between, say, $50,000 and $100,000, and let's use low number. Graders in the industry at the moment are costing us uh, 40 or $50 million a year, if not $80 million a year. It is not feasible to be saying to government, come and solve our problems uh, and please give us nearly $100 million so that we can do our own independent grading. Uh, what we do need is to provide a long-term solution. And that long-term solution is DEXA. DEXA uh, technology, uh, which is used for objective carcass measurement uh, for small stock, that is prime lamb and goat, has reached a stage where it is ready for commercial deployment. Beef Dexter, as Sean Starling said, is nearing confirmation to be ready for commercial installation in 2017. And at this point in time, I, I must acknowledge the collaboration through industry. A lot of the work being done on objective carcass measurement has been through the MDC and with the support of uh, a number of processes and their own money. So at MLA, our vision is also about capturing the value of this technology and the potential the data it generates so that it can be used to the benefit of the whole industry. Once the first stage of OCM is installed both small stock and in both small stock and, and beef systems, it will provide valuable information for the supply chain, including, as Sean Starling said, salable meat yield, bone and fat. The system will continue to become more valuable as ongoing res research and development enhances the application of objective carcass measurements around all conceivable measures, including Osmeat, including sorry, MSA grading that is carried out today by, by chips, as you would well know. But for the benefits of objective carcass measurement to technology to be realised by the entire supply chain and in full, the technology must be installed universally. universally resulting in a stage one objective carcass measurement system that is consistent across Australia. To explain that, we want the same system of how carcasses are measured from first stage OCM right across Australia, from Tasmania to the Gulf and, and now across the Broome, of course. The ongoing competitiveness of Australia's red meat supply chain requires a shift to livestock production and marketing with producers will rewarded against objective data and value measurements. Again, this shift can only be underpinned by objective carcass measurement technology being installed in a uniform manner across the whole industry and in a collaborative manner. 
That's why today I can announce that MLA is creating the platform to install stage one objective carcass measurement technology into all Ausmeet accredited meat processing facilities. The cost is approximately $150 million to have a uniform, transparent system across Australia. MLA has gained in principle support from the Deputy Prime Minister and Federal Minister for Agriculture around objective carcass measurement and its introduction into all Ausmeet registered facilities. MLA will continue to consult and work with the peak industry councils on how to structure the introduction of the one-off costs of objective carcass measurements, be it through a commercial loan by industry or government funding. In the long term, objective carcass measurement will have countless benefits, let alone the potential cost savings over the long term. We propose that Osmeet would be the whole of chain uh, independent regulator and system calibrator. Most important but of all is, is objective carcass measurement will generate a lot of data. MLA has a plan to ensure that data is available to all participants across the value chain. And this has formed the basis of our digital strategy, which you also heard about today. MLA has started on the digital strategy. Many other industries are still trying to work out what it means. Our clear goal is to ensure that data is accessible and easy for producers to use. We've learnt lessons around locking up data. The more data is accessible and easy to use, the more benefit the whole value chain will obtain from it. So in summary, uh, your MLA has a strong track record of pursuing long-term vision to create value in the red meat and livestock industry. And we're still benefiting from those investments now. Today, MLA is generating value for your industry and stakeholders by ensuring your MLA is commercially focused as you are in your businesses. We are building on our strengths and heading off the threats that I discussed and securing Australia's place on domestic and international dinner plates. Our vision for the future of the industry will continue generating value for you today, tomorrow and beyond 2020. We'll do this by developing new technologies such as objective carcass measurements to generate more value right across the value chain. Capturing the value of this technology and the potential of its data generates, and the data it generates to the benefit of the industry through our plan to install objective carcass measurement technology is into all Osmeet accredited facilities. So I'd ask you to just look back at what I've said, and that is, if we in an industry listen to the critics of MSA or NLIS or our traceability systems, I think you could think about where we would be today. Independent data analysis from the International Centre of Economics has MSA returning $12.50 for every $1 invested. Our integrity systems return $8 for every $1 invested. We must view the investment in objective carcass measurement in the same manner as past leaders of our industry. We must innovate and we must invest and we must continue to differentiate our high quality Australian product from the rest of the world. So my last parting comment is that we are relentlessly commercially focused through a vision for the future of our industry and through collaboration and collective investment, MLA's fostering prosperity in the red meat industry today, tomorrow and beyond 2020. I thank you for your time.